Okay, let's outline some concepts that help us get toward the Philidor position or a win of the rook or mate. I'm going to call this a cage. That's when the attacking king and queen both co cover a square immediately in front of the defending king. That interrupts the series of endless checks that you're otherwise going to get here. In this kind of position with the threat of immediate mate here on d8, black is essentially dead. There's no way to stop it other than an immediate loss of the rook. And even if we move the defender to the center of the board, the same problem exists. Because of that mate threat, uh, there's just no way to save the game. Now there's another form of the cage, where the queen and the king are attacking a square that's diagonal to the defending king, even here, black is in a lot of trouble. Again, there's a threat of mate on uh, e8. So in order to escape that, black can try going there, but then there's a check and an immediate skewer of the rook. Attempts to move the rook lead to an instructive mate. Check there, check there, check there. Kind of pretty. Now, if we bring it off the edge of the board, developing a cage structure is still very good for the attacker. This is one of the ways you have of forcing the defender to move back, controlling a square that's lateral to the king, forcing the rook to sit on the diagonal. If you're the attacker in this position, you check there, you check there, and it's a good idea for the defender to go either to e8 or c8, e7 is an immediate fork. Watch out for that. People will fall into it every now and then. Check on the diagonal. Check from the corner. Skewer. Skewers come up just as often as forks once you've got a cage going. And watch out for a defender who does that because you have an immediate mate there. That's not a position that comes up commonly, and so it's sometimes easy to miss the fact that the queen can duck over to b8 and give immediate checkmate. Now let's talk about the diagonal position right here. The essential feature is that if the rook moves, a move of the white king will cause an immediate discovered check, which usually leads to disaster. So in fact, when it's anchored in the corner, black's only real alternative is to concede an immediate Philidor position. Just like this. If we move it one square away from the corner, and we put white on the move, well, white's main alternative is to transfer the move by simply maintaining the threat of a discovered check. It's really not good for black to move the rook here, because we get an immediate Philidor position just like that. So, white ha so black has to move the king when you give check here. Now if black returns to this square, then you've transferred the move and now black has to give way. If black goes here, this is where knowledge of cages comes in useful. Check there and create the cage. White is now double covering this square and it's going to be very difficult for black to avoid an immediate mate. There's mate threat here, giving check here. Just recreates our old friend the cage. Now let's start using some of what you've been learning. From here, white gives a check there, a check there. Now, what's black going to do? If that's the answer, then we have the diagonal position. If that's the answer, immediate checkmate. Watch out for that tricky checkmate.
once you've gotten black on the move, uh, really the best way to defend is to bring the rook back like that when you get an immediate philidor, just like so. Instead, if the king comes out, you've already seen how to construct the cage. That double threat pretty much ends resistance. Now we've moved a little bit further away from our friend the Philidor. It's black to move. And black goes there. In this position, black doesn't need to be too concerned if white sets up the threat of the discovered check. Because all that happens is the king pivots to the other corner square. If white goes back here, well, we haven't made much progress. This is the key move. Once again, we're setting up a cage concept controlling that square. We're also preventing a spite check there. This is the best way for white to make progress. Black here really only has the alternative of sending the rook far away. That would be an example. And now, now that the rook has gone far away, now is when white sets up for the diagonal position. At this point, the best defense is to return here, at which point we transfer the move to black. If instead of that, black gives check, well, you go this way. And now you give check from the diagonal next to the diagonal on which the rook sits, because that gives the attacker access to these important forking squares. Well, the defender goes there. Any other move leads to an immediate fork. And there goes the rook. So it really isn't good for black to do anything after this position except to go to the diagonal position. And you've already seen how to turn that into a philidor.